No, they're not your friends, but they'll pretend to be. Jeff and Jeremy here. It's 9.04. We get the mind funk going strong. We're talking about the election. Uh, today's question uh, focusing right around it. 46% of people in a recent survey said... Today's election. What we got, is today's voting day? I didn't say today. Oh, okay. I thought you said today. Why don't you put your phone down and pay attention to what I'm saying? Today. I thought you said today's election. What, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing on your phone right now that's so important? You said today's election. No, I didn't. I, I listened. 46% of people said they would do this to get their candidate elected. 805-543-3693 are the numbers to get through. Curtis, first up. Go ahead. Uh, would it be uh, vote twice? Ooh, no, it's not commit voter fraud. <laughs> I don't even know how you would do that. I mean, I think this is something that, that, that you can actually do. I, I don't think what? voting twice is something you can oh, do. Okay, no, no, this is not something. This is something... The answer to the question is something that you could that do. Any of us could do easily. Ethically, I don't know how great it is, but you can do it. Is it illegal? Is it against the law to do this? I don't think so. Okay. Thanks, Kurt. You can try back. 805 46% of people in a recent survey said they would do a lot of things to get their uh, candidate elected. This is the number one thing they said they would do to get their candidate elected. If you know what it is, we're going to send you down to the... Uh, Haunted Hills drive through experience with the Elks in Santa Maria, 805-543-3693. Very vote-worthy music you've chosen for this segment, brother. Okay. It's uh, called Campaigns and Election Soundtrack. Oh, good. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> Stephen. Hello, Steve. Hello there. How are you? Good, good. We'll send you down to the big haunted drive through If you can tell us what Let's 46% see. of people say they're willing to do to get their candidate elected. Bribe friends and family. That is correct. Good job. <laughs> That must have been very Googleable. Yeah. Is that a word? Google? Google? Googleable. Yeah. Googleable. Yeah. Give it a goog. Yeah. So, but it's very misleading because when it, when somebody says bribe to me, it says that that's cash. Okay. But in this survey, five percent. See, I hear bribe and I think sexual favors. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's part of it too. <laughs> Uh, bribe uh, for cash is five uh, percent are comfortable with paying cash to somebody for a bribe. Three and a half are as are willing to go as far as deploying a romantic bribe, sexual favors. Yeah, but um, not with your family. I mean, I friends though. Yeah. Um, Maybe well, friends. some family members. You know, your hey. wife. <laughs> your wife, if she's going one way and you're going the other, you know. Oh, or, sure, sure. Okay. But I think the women have the upper hand in that one, which puts Donald Trump behind the eight ball. I would think. Um, but the the biggest method they use in bribe is guilting their friends and family into voting who they want them to vote for. Hmm. Bribing. I don't even know what I would bribe. Now, the funny thing is, if I go to my family, most of my family is on par. I mean, we're all on the same page. And I don't know why that is. It just happens to be that way. Do, is your family, are, are you on the same page, Steve, with your family, Steve? Most, most of my friends and family are on a, have opposing views, so a bribe wouldn't even work for them. They oh, take really? <laughs> have yeah. you, so 10.5% say that they would use reverse psychology. Okay. So that, that means, means they're dumb. I mean, that means their family's dumb and their friends are dumb. <laughs> um, and then 6% said that they would use uh, food for, right. as, a, as a bribe. So, are, have you, are uh, more you people trying? are willing to use food than they are cash or uh, romantic favors. I think somewhere in my 30s, I, re- I got smart enough to figure out you can't persuade people to change their, their thinking, especially when it comes to something like this. Um, have you tried to persuade anybody of your friends or family to go your way, Steve? Um, like I said, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Everyone has their mind made up already. So no matter how many debates they have, right. no matter what you say, whatever facts you have, no one's going to change their mind. Well, hell, like talking, I have to agree with that. Talking to Tommy. Uh, Tommy Gong? Yeah, Tommy Gong. The guy I mean, that wrote the Jet Li movie? Seems like a book. Um, Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee, not Jet Li. That's somebody different. Sorry. And the election. I got my Lees confused. And, and the election's not today. It's, <laughs> it's, and it could be today, depending on when you want to turn in your ballot. He said a lot of people have already voted. Yeah, he said record numbers have already come in yeah. because of the uh, the fact that they opened up the uh, the ballots early. A lot of people are dropping off their ballots. Did you mail yours in? Have you voted yet? I I have not. My wife and I usually spend about an hour go over all the new bills they're trying to pass. Sure. And try to, 
intelligently power. vote. Will you so. put it? Will you power? Will you put That's it? A long in, time. That is that is some time. Will you put it in the mail or will you take it down to the county clerk's office? You know, it's really easy for us. The place is like down the street from us. There's no line. You just drop it off. It takes literally two minutes to do it. So yeah. that's uh, how yeah, I, was... I usually drop it off to make sure it got there. I had to drive into town to drop mine off at the county clerk's office, but I walked it right in. I put it right in there, and I felt good about it. Uh, young Cameron is uh, our intern, and uh, Young Cameron, this is the first presidential campaign that you'll or election that you'll be voting in. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> okay, we'll find out why you're super excited coming up. <laughs> All right. Dude, take a listen. You'll have your chance. You said today's election. No, I didn't. I, I listen. Jeff and Jeremy here. It's 9.04. We get the mind funk going strong. We're talking about the election. Uh, today's question uh, focusing right around it. 46% of people in a recent survey said... Today's election. What, we got, is today's voting day? I didn't say today. Oh, okay. I thought you said today's Why don't you put your phone down and pay attention to what I'm said, saying? Today, I thought you said today's election. What, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing on your phone right now that's so important? You said today's election. No, I didn't. I, I listened. <laughs> you you can listened understand, real well. though, if you go back and play it... Sure, I'll play you, it again when, for when you. you say When you say today's election... Here, I'll say it, I'll uh, play it again. Today. You said today's election. No, I didn't. I, I listened. Jeff and Jeremy here. It's 9.04. We get the mind funk going strong. We're talking about the election. Uh, today's question uh, focusing right around. See that pause there? Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, so I'll, I'll tell you this right now. That mm-hmm. pause there, I, mm-hmm. you can understand that if I was only 30% listening to what you were if saying. If you weren't on your phone trying to buy a house, then you would have known what I said. You but you were distracted because your wife is texting you and email. I don't know what she's doing. You and she's like, we got to get our offer in on this house because well, it's, it's, it's got a swimming pool. It's a hot climate. Which I hope I, I, I want to come swim in that swimming pool. No, so I don't want to push this too far. No, you're not invited. <laughs> See, I don't want to push this too far. <laughs> but you I realize as I got into I'm this, I'm, like, I'm never going to get to go swimming in the pool if I keep pushing this. 30% listening to your daily sales pitch because I've been listening to it for 15 years that I could uh, misconstrue that. All right, whatever. Excuse. Now All I right. want to get to the important stuff. Cameron is voting in his first presidential election. And, and he's Cam- very excited about it, by Cameron, the way. Cameron, you, you had exuberance uh, when we asked you, uh, what that is. was that fake exuberance or was that real exuberance? No, it's real exuberance. Now people, you know, when they say, oh, you're too young, you, you didn't vote, you can't complain. Now I can complain. <laughs> Did you feel? <laughs> Great it, point. When you were 16 years old. You're relevant, old, man. You're if, relevant. When you were 16 years old in 2016. Did you feel like you got slighted because you didn't get an ch- opportunity to make your voice heard? I mean, I hated both candidates, yes. but yes. <laughs> well, do you love both candidates this time? <laughs> or, uh, or either one of the candidates? I think time? love is a strong word, just to, in general. I tolerate one of them. Okay. That's all we ask for. So get out and vote, damn it, because you have to. Cameron, do you are you registered to vote? I am registered. I actually registered the uh, the year I turned, like, right when I turned 18. You know, I was just reading a story that people um, are not, uh, they're not, <laughs> what is it that they're not doing? Oh, this is really funny. Um, not that guy. People who don't vote because of jury duty. Oh, yeah, this <laughs> used to be my thing for a long time. So they won't vote yeah. because when you sign up to vote, it also puts your name in the hat to yeah. become in jury duty. And as soon as I signed up to vote... Oh, no, it was like immediate, right? And I, I yeah. signed up for the... Ab, it was the absentee ballot where I could fill it out at home. That's when I started getting pulled into juries. Well, I don't think that has anything to do with it, whether or not you're doing the absentee ballot or whether you're just registered. I, I think probably minute, a coincidence. The moment you register, yeah. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you're just... You're, you're, on the, you're on the list. It's, so. your, it's the price you have to pay for your... Uh, opportunity to go mark down a box and stick it into a, uh, or mark on a box and stick it into a box. But I got to tell you, you know, I've served on one jury, and it was a, it was not the most exciting case, but the process was was really cool, and I enjoyed that. But you know, that's not for everybody. I realize, but I got in there, I uh, I kept quiet until I had to speak <laughs> up. And then I convinced a lot of people in the room to go. To, what to me was very rational, and uh, we got, I got the outcome I wanted. Um, 
Cameron, I was like you. I was very excited when I turned 18 to go register to vote. And then I went and I registered to vote. And we're just coming off the excitement of the three-dog race between Ross Perot, <laughs> George Bush, and Bill Clinton. And I was like, all right, I can't vote in that one, but I, the year later, I can vote. And, and you were anti-establishment, so you were 18, a Perot guy, weren't well, you? Well, it didn't matter because I couldn't. I wasn't yeah, but a, you were you 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 obviously you cared about signing up. You must have had an opinion. But I was not old enough to vote when that election took place. I was only old enough to vote when in ninety three, or after I turned eighteen. Mm-hmm. So I go in there and I'm like, all right, this is what it's about. Still having last year in my mind and how crazy that was with the three dog race with Ross Perot and George Bush and Bill Clinton. And I was, I'll go in there and it was a bunch of initiatives that I cared nothing about. And I was like, Oh man, this voting sucks. And I didn't do it again till I was 21 because when I was 21, it was a big deal. But I remember when you were in college, you voted for Nader because you were anti-establishment. Yes. I did vote for Nader. <laughs> And I, I feel like I've, all the adults I know make fun of people who voted for Ralph Nader. Yeah, yeah, like Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, Jeff, I, did you I vote for Al Gore too? And this is, and I'll tell you this about uh, Donald Trump. I like it because he doesn't take a lot of uh, uh, donations for his his campaign. Right. Yeah, or they say I just it. remember knowing you, and from the outside looking in, as just somebody who was your friend. And I don't care about politics. I didn't care about it then. I uh, probably care a little bit more about it now, but especially in college, I was just like, Because you're an old man. Get off my lawn. Yeah, but uh, back then, I swear you told me that the only reason you got into some of these classes you got into is because there was, it was like, there were cool girls in there. There was like, yeah, these girls are cool. Mm-hmm. They're like the science girls. The yeah. uh, didn't you, Weren't you in a class where you guys were, were planting a garden or something? Yeah, an they organic took us, garden? they took us down to the creek and had us plant trees. <laughs> And then after he was in, came out of that class, and he had all this influence of all these hippies, that he was a Nader guy. He was like, I'm a Nader guy, damn it! I'm a Nader guy! Yeah. I was a Nader guy. In college. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. Uh, with his Hawaiian shirts on and his flip-flops. And, yeah, I, no, I didn't wear the flip-flops down the creek, because that was dangerous. I, was, uh, <laughs> muck, muck. I didn't think you owned anything but flip-flops. Mucklucks. Mucklucks down to the creek. Mucklucks, yeah. Pastor Brown said you could drop them off. Cafe Roma. That is correct. That is one of the locations. Yeah. That's the one that would have stuck out in my mind, too. We would have also accepted Central Coast Surfboards and Sunshine Health Foods out in Morro Bay. Uh, but Cafe Roma is a lo- location where you could drop it. Yeah, you use la- laptops laying around there, Bernie? I do. We've actually donated one. For, to, the, to the San Luis Coastal Unified School District? We have. I actually am part of a rotary group, and we're helping them with the drive. That's incredible. I have you guys some, are doing really good work. I have some old computers, uh, Bernie, and I'm I'm concerned about, you know, information, credit card information, tax, social security, like stuff like that that's on your heart. How do you wipe all that off and make sure that it's gone? So you're supposed to take that and have that wipe clean, kind of like you do with your phone. You set it back to factory settings. So that's what they're asking you to do. How do you do that? Though? Yeah. I mean, like, you just you can just Google it, and it'll tell you exactly. Okay. Like for a phone, it's like five steps. You have to go through, and you set it back to your factory settings. What about Windows? God, no, Windows 95? Be, no, it's got to be a certain... <laughs> yeah, I have a hard drive in there that's Windows, Windows 95 10 compliant. on compliant. In order to donate it, it has to be Windows 10 compliant, okay? Well, I don't, I don't know. know. Does? Can they use not, a Commodore, Jeremy? I don't is, know. This is not a, 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 a throw your what about uh, Windows 95? drive away. I, I mean, have a tower. I wonder if I could even turn it... I mean, I, I know it'll turn on, but I don't know <laughs> if I could even operate it, Windows 95. And so... Oh. I probably should just take the hard drive out and then just toss the computer. We've talked to computer forensics uh, people I've before. Yeah. Uh, Steve Burgess is a local uh, computer forensics person, and I always thought that you could just throw it off the roof of a building and you'd be fine destroying the uh, information on it. He's like, uh, no, I've recovered right. stuff off of drives that have been in set on fires fire. yeah. before. Well, and, and I, we've had the opposite, a bunch of pictures on a, a drive, a, a separate drive that we couldn't retrieve. They just said, nope, can't do it. Great. Well, thanks for trying, you losers. <laughs> maybe, maybe give me a little bit more ambition. Oh, here. they took the money and then found that out, of course. Ooh. All right. Well, Bernie, uh, we got twenty four uh, dollars for you to go down and check out uh, Federico's Fresh Max downtown, slow at the Wyman Hotel. Okay, twenty four dollars. Twenty. Oh. Okay.
But once again, you can't hear. She's very a donator. Well. You know, Seth, she donated you, one. Seth, what did you hear there? <laughs> Twenty-four. <laughs> Twenty-four. Well, you got him once, so he's got, got a Rico's. really. He's, he's going big. It you know, you got him four. once. You know, four is not just a number. It's actually, you know, it's a verb. Yeah, it's and then the next one's twenty-five. So there's twenty-four dollars in there plus one. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I think Sue sent that that email yesterday about Tom Petty because she said tomorrow it is today, the twentieth. Of yeah. 1950 is Tom's birthday. Not would have been. It is. It's forever your birthday. That's they don't true. take that away when you die. But I, I see that even on a headline I saw. And it's like, it would have been. been, been a, it says, still is. So see, I was looking at something here on a story. It said uh, would have been 70 tomorrow. And that was this morning I got this. So that's wrong? Would have been. Today's well, like, birthday. They say it would have been his 70th birthday. No, it still is. Oh, no. Here we go. Okay. Yep. Today's his birthday. <laughs> they, this was written Sorry. on October 20th. People do all the but time. But it came in my inbox today. So when I read it, I was thinking it was tomorrow. So today would have been his 70th. Yes. Still is. Still is. He was born on a certain day. And well, he's not alive. It's always his birthday. 70 still your birthday. years from today. No, I disagree. It will be his When you die, you don't have birthdays birthday. anymore. You were never born then. By your logic. I'm just saying. When you die, you don't have birthdays anymore. You know, 140 years from today. I used to work with a woman years ago. If we'd do something that might might not be by the rules, and she would say, "What are they going to do? Take away my birthday?" And you just took away somebody's birthday. Well, I know. Way to go, Jeremy. I know. Technically, <laughs> you're being PC here, saying this is the day that we being celebrate PC, being your birth. Somewhat correct. Yes, but I mean, it's I, always but, your birthday. But yeah, I understand that day is always going to be the day he was born. Yes. Okay, but we yes. don't celebrate it. No, and we shouldn't celebrate death days, for God's sake. Why not? Why would you want to do that? No, celebrate when they came into the world, not when they left it. You know, re- relive that misery. You know, how about the joy of the birth? No. Jeremy's about the dark. I know, I macabre, think too hard. Though. I mean, you know. Thinking yeah. deep on this one. He looks for the stories for dumbass of the day that people die in. And he's like, oh, yeah, this dumbass. Oh, I got a good one today. Died. CNN, well, this is for tomorrow. CNN analyst is on a Zoom meeting. Oh, that. <laughs> He works for a newspaper. Well, no news. excuse. Sorry, you're that's out. There's, there's no, there's, there's no so many, way there's around that. So many things that like, like that guy is <laughs> the level. Just go away. Level you're never gonna live this a down. Thousand creeper. You know, <laughs> I mean, how do you, how do you like get a hankering to do that while you're on a Zoom meeting? You well, know, sometimes you got an itch, you got to scratch it. No, uh, uh-uh, uh, that doesn't work like that. Okay, on a Zoom meeting. <laughs> We yeah. don't know who was on the Zoom meeting. Let me see who else was on the Zoom what, meeting. Did he have a, Let a me second see. screen Let me going? See. I don't. I'm not when sure I was how that works. Supercharged with testosterone and all kinds of hormones in my teens, I wasn't just you know okay. stepping aside. And Time doing and a that. place. So yeah. let's Time let's just place. real quick. You know, since we're now, we're not going to use it for dumbass tomorrow. Let's let's think about this. All right, you're in a Zoom meeting. Obviously, somebody catches your eye. You get the hankering. This is what what must is have what happened. is his thought? Like I'm going to turn the camera off and they can't see me, and I'm going to do this because I can see them, and they're going to go away when the meeting's over. So I got to do it now. Big Brother's always watching. I mean, it's a, that camera's on. It's always going to see. Yeah. But he got too excited, and he bumped the mouse, and next thing, the camera's back on. <laughs> I, yeah. Cameron, that is a lesson for you, okay? There's, there's no excuse. Just save your hankering for another time.